Hi everyone, welcome back to part three of our vlog series focused on Citrix solutions. My name is Ryan Fries. I have the pleasure of supporting our Citrix practice here at Ingram Micro, as well as some of our key data center initiatives on our data center Delta Force team. In our last video, we discussed four reasons why you should be selling Citrix virtual apps and desktop service. That is, of course, if you aren't already. If you are, uh, great job, thank you. Uh, so definitely check out my last video if you wanna learn more about the, the Citrix service around their virtual apps and desktops. That'll actually serve as a, a really great introductory for what we're gonna be talking about on today's video. Which really brings me to the topic of today's video. I'm very happy to announce that we actually have a guest speaker joining us today, Damon Duncan. He's a partner sales engineer over at Citrix. So Damon is joining us to discuss the partnership between Citrix and Microsoft, including some of the exciting announcements. If you attended Microsoft Inspire conference, you might've heard about um, things around Azure Virtual Desktop, as well as Windows 365. And Damon has been with Citrix since 2014. Now, he's done everything from being a frontline support engineer where he assisted customers with troubleshooting, configuration guidance, things of that nature. He also supported sales and sales engineers over at Citrix by helping define sales processes, procedures, um, helping them with messaging as, as a technology spe uh, specialist. And now he actually supports a variety of different Citrix partnerships, um, including Microsoft, which is why he's here today. So Damon, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Ryan. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, so Damon, I, I know you and I, we talked offline a little bit around the partnership between Citrix and Microsoft. And I thought a good place to start would be to give an, the audience kind of like this overall idea of what Microsoft's Azure Virtual Desktop is. Um, many of our audience will probably know that more so as Windows Virtual Desktop. So as a disclaimer, it was rebranded to AVD. So you might hear us use that term throughout today's today's video. Um, and also, why do you think partners listening today should, should really care about Azure Virtual Desktop and maybe provide us a little bit of an overview of how Citrix works alongside and, and adds on value to, to Azure Virtual Desktop? Absolutely. Well, you know, as you said, uh, you know, back at Inspire, they kind of did a rebranding of the what we had called for what about 12 to 18 months. We had called it Windows Virtual Desktop and they rebranded it to Azure Virtual Desktop. Um, as far as what's underneath the hood, it's still pretty much the same. Uh, there was a couple of uh, feature additions and a couple of expansions, but uh, at its core, um, WVD and AVD are roughly the same pro uh, same product. Um, there was very little change as far as operational and functionality goes. Um, you know, how, how, you know, the partnership came to be and, you know, uh, what Citrix, the value add that Citrix brings to it is, you know, reality is, you know, AVD or WVD, depending on uh, who you're talking to and what acronym they like to use, um, will be a good enough product for a lot of customers that are out there. Um, it will suit their needs and it will, you know, will, you know, will cover a lot of bases for them. Uh, however, uh, for those customers, uh, especially when you start getting into the larger seat customers, your, uh, your larger commercial moving up on an enterprise, um, AVD starts losing a little of its luster because of its scalability starts faltering a little bit, um, which, you know, which is where, you know, Citrix comes in. Uh, and we uh, kind of help provide that scalability for customers. Uh, we take what Microsoft already gives customers, which is a really solid feature base. Um, and then we take all the Citrix features that Citrix is known for, uh, whether it be our virtual apps, and, virtual apps and desktops, our workspace, our networking products, um, and we just put it right on top and we just keep, keep right on going. Um, and that's where the value add really comes in, uh, is that we don't really uh, unseat the Azure uh, infrastructure. We just add to it and make it a little bit better for those customers that need a lot more uh, refined solutions uh, or you know, a lot more um, fine-tuned solutions based on their business models. Yeah, awesome. And the more important question is, what name do you like better, Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows Virtual Desktop? You know, I, I like Azure uh, Virtual Desktop uh, just from uh, it, kind of, it It makes logical sense because it's a it's a virtual desktop running on Azure. So it kind of makes sense uh, to go with a, with AVD or Azure Virtual Desktop. 
Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you. And kind of like what, what you alluded to earlier, um, I actually do get several partners that, that will ask me, you know, what's a competitive advantage that Citrix provides over Windows Virtual Desktop or, or Azure, Azure Virtual Desktop? And I always like to try and clarify, like, look, there are going to be cases where Azure Virtual Desktop will be enough as a standalone, but there's also plenty of cases where Citrix adds a lot of value to that messaging. So it shouldn't be about ABD or Citrix, it should be ABD and Citrix and really going through that messaging. Um, right. So I, I'm curious though, this is a, probably more of a curiosity thing for, for my side, sure. is the, the Windows 365 Cloud PC announcement. Uh -huh. um, will Citrix play in that space at all? And, and most importantly, you know, does does it compete with what Citrix is doing today? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, and the reason for that is because Windows 365 uh, kind of fits into that SMB market, uh, which is where our CVAD, um, was it CVAD standard on Azure would fit in. Uh, it's very, it's a, I don't like to use it. It's a, it's a very vanilla product. Um, there's not a lot of expansion capabilities. Um, you're kind of locked into what the compute uh, is based on you know what you're paying per month. Uh, so it's really good in those instances for customers who need to know exactly what they're spending and don't have a true VDI infrastructure, which is what uh, Azure Virtual Desktop and Citrix, which is their market, is that those customers that have true VDI, that have, you know, you know, a couple, you know, you know, 500 north of 500 users or, you know, up into a few thousand VMs they have to manage. Um, and the Windows 365 is just not going to go there. What it will do, though, is those Windows 365 instances that customers may need for seasonal um, uh, for seasonal users. You know, you know, think about the IRS during tax time when they hire a whole bunch of people to go through tax returns. They can spin up some Windows 365s. They can they, they can manage those um, those clients uh, via the control plane. And then once you know that tax season uh, contract is voided and they're done with their work, they can blow them away. But the really good thing about that is it does give those customers a known cost every month for those computes. So they're going to pay X amount of dollars, which the pricing list for that just came out about a week or so ago from Microsoft um, as to uh, what those compute uh, compute costs are going to be. So it, it gives that known cost to the customers that need to know it, but it's not going to be a disruptor to the commercial and the enterprise sector because they have um, embedded themselves with a very robust VDI infrastructure and it's just not going to change that. So I see it more as a disruptor in the SMB market and some of your smaller commercial um, and in a seasonal worker standpoint, but in your traditional VDI, like a lot of custom, a lot of companies are running nowadays, it, I don't see it as much of a disruptor and as much as a compete uh, with Citrix either. Awesome. So, so that's an interesting factoid there, in that that it's going to be a fixed cost, whereas Azure Virtual Desktop today is based on a consumption model, right? So you, you can Correct. actually purchase ABD. You're just paying for the utilization, the the CPU, the RAM, the storage that's required to to host that that virtual desktop in Azure. Um, so I think that's important for, for everyone to know, uh, just uh, to recap that for everyone listening today. Um, so another question for you, Damon, if, if a partner listening wants to learn more about Citrix's offering around what you're doing with Azure, specifically around Azure Virtual Desktop, and I mean, I get partners asking me all the time for, for trials to test out um, Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service, mm -hmm. what, what would you say would be their, their best next step? Uh, their best next step is honestly to go to citrixcloud.com and actually go ahead and sign up for a Citrix Cloud account and start requesting the trials of the products that are out there. Um, one of the one of the bigger products that we have that's especially if they've already got a Citrix uh, a Citrix environment is to if uh, you know to kind of dive into what Citrix Cloud can offer is pull up a trial for our Citrix analytics because the analytics trial is actually 60 days. So you can get, uh, so you can plug in the data sources for analytics and start pulling data in. And that's the all analytics is going to do is just look at, it's just going to pull all that data into a place where you can go look at it. It's not going to inject anything. It's not, you know, putting any ICA sessions or anything of that nature in there. It's just looking at the data, almost like a Wireshark trace. It's just pulling in what's going through. And you can look at your, you know, environment for 60 days and see what's going on and kind of get a feel for how the cloud, you know, control plane works. 
Um, and then at that point, you can start requesting trials for, you know, our CVAD service, our endpoint management, uh, content collaboration, the gateway service and things of that nature. Yeah, it's awesome. And also the, the analytics platform demos really well, I've noticed when I've been on calls with end users and you show them the security analytics and the performance analytics, they always have questions because it, it makes sense, right? You can actually see where users are logging in from, how much data they're downloading, what type of performance they're having with, you know, with log on times, session yep. disconnections, things of that nature. Yeah, um, you so can I think also, that's all really good advice. And it's also got, uh, it's now got SaaS application analytics in there as too. So you can see what a SaaS applications customers are using uh, within the analytics as well. So if you got customers that are using, say for instance, Workday or Salesforce, you can see how those applications are being utilized um, within the environment as well. Yep. And then one last call out for, for everyone listening. Damon gave some great advice for, for getting a trial. Um, for those partners listening today that already registered Citrix partner, um, you can also go to enablement.citrix.com. There's a lot of great training videos there. There's on-demand labs. So if anyone's listening and, and you want any questions on how to access that, you can reach out to myself or Damon. I'm sure Damon knows how to find Absolutely. You there as well. Um, so, so last question for you, Damon, I kind of, uh, I like to make these more lighthearted, especially as the final sure. question, but, but where do you see technology heading over the next five, five years out of curiosity? Um, you know, I, funny you asked that question. I've actually, my wife and I have actually had this discussion, uh, recently because of a lot of the news that's been coming out with, uh, some companies that are going back to the office full time, some companies that are keeping their, their, all their employees at home full time. And some people that are going to a hybrid state, I think, uh, human ingenuity, um, and the business world will figure it out. But I think in the next five years, I think most people are going to, we're going to be in some kind of hybrid state. Uh, in a in a in a constant state of you know on prem and in the cloud, whether it be at home or in the work in the office place, um, I think cloud is probably my personal opinion is probably going to uh, in the next five years going to be uh, I don't know about forty percent of all computing probably globally. Um, that's you know what I would rec that's what I kind of think it would be. Um, you know, obviously it could be higher or lower, but just the nature of human ingenuity, uh, the social aspect that we as humans crave, because I know we've all been stuck at home for the last year and a half and we're starting to crave that social interaction. And I think that's going to drive people to start going back out more, uh, going to places like we work uh, and start working there, uh, you know, and, you know, connecting up to whatever Internet they have there and logging into their you know, their AVD, their Citrix and AVD infrastructure for that their work sets up for them, but they're talking with somebody across the hall that works for a completely different company in a completely different market. Uh, so I think we're going to stay in a hybrid state the next five years, but I think cloud computing is going to take over, you know, about 40% of total computing uh, globally in those five years. But we as humans are still going to be in this, this hybrid state of, you know, going into the office and working from home or the coffee shop or mm -hmm. a hot spot on our cell phone or, you know, watching our kids at the park and, you know, whatever. That's yep. what, I, yeah, that's I, what I, I see in the next five years. Yeah, but I, I completely agree with you. And I, I think, especially on the, the cl cloud consumption side of the house, I think with the advent of 5G and edge computing, it, cloud is here to say it's going to continue to be adopted by by a variety of different organizations out there. And yeah, the social interaction, luckily I live in Florida, so most of the things are opened up right now. <laughs> Uh, of course, we have uh, quite a bit of cases compared to the rest of the country. But yeah, when you work from home all day, you, you definitely desire that social interaction yes, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, I know. I mean, this has been great, Damon. Uh, thank you again for, for joining us. And, and remember, everyone, if you like today's video, definitely smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the little bell notification. That way you can get notified if any new video for, for the vlog series is released. Um, and also on, on the next video, we'll actually be in, um, introducing somebody from our Business Transformation Center here at Ingram Micro. So definitely stay tuned for that video. We'll be talking about how you can leverage Citrix and our BTC, our, our Business Transformation Center to help grow your business. So thank you again, everyone, for tuning in and see you next time. Bye.